Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. Really appreciate you sticking through this. This video, we're gonna be talking about something a little new, function templates. So the whole idea of templatizing is something that C++ introduced. You may also hear it as generics in other programming languages. Now, this can be tied to functions and it can also be tied to classes. The context of this video is function templates. So if you're looking for templatized classes, this is not the video for you, although this might give you the foundation for the concept of templates. So you might still get some use out of it. Now, before we get into the whole concept stuff, you need to check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So here's the thing. When you create a function, you have to determine what types you're going to accept as arguments. So you create those parameters in the function declaration or definition. Now, if you want to accept different types, then you have an issue, right? Because the function can only take certain types. So this is where overloading comes in. And we did videos on overloading. It's a super valuable thing. So although I'm going to suggest an alternative to overloading, this is not necessarily a replacement for overloading because that's still going to come up as you'll see in a few videos here. But the thing with overloading is it allows us to make basically multiple versions of the same function with different signatures. So specifically, we can take different arguments for these different versions of the function. So the example I gave earlier is we have an area function. One takes an integer x and the other one takes an integer x and an integer y. You can name them whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. The point is this one takes one argument, this one takes two. Or you could do the same thing where you take doubles and that's fine. In fact, the, the double one would still be able to take an integer value because an integer can easily be converted to a double. So maybe you could make one that takes a double X, then you can make another version that takes double X and double Y. And then maybe you could take one that takes a certain custom type such as a rectangle type or whatever it might be. I think you guys understand the concept of overloading. So where does templatizing come in? Well, the thing is you might have to make lots and lots of variations of this function using a bunch of different overloads. But the general concept or the purpose of the function is often very similar from different variations. So one really good example of where this might show up is with the swap function. We worked on creating a swap function before and it looks a little something like this, where we take two reference variables and in this case, they're integers, not too concerned about the type. Just understand that we're taking two variables, x and y, and they're of a particular type. And then you might want to create a swap that does it with strings, and then a swap that does it with custom objects. You can see that the amount of overloads can quickly add up. But what if we could create a version of this function that did not specify the type, but was more generic? Instead of saying int, we just said t. And this T is basically a placeholder for any type. Doesn't matter what the type is, as long as this type and this type is the same. Well, that my friends is where the concept of templatizing comes in. We basically made a template for this function and this will work for integers, it'll work for strings and so forth. But the thing is when we put a T here, the compiler is just going to assume we're trying to accept type T as if it was an integer or a custom type. It doesn't quite understand that this is a generic or a templatized function. So in order to say, yo, this is a templatized function, you have to do one more thing. Up here, you specify that this is a template, and then inside of carrots, you say type name. You may also see some people put class here, but I'll go with type name and then T. So this is basically specifying what that generic type is. In this case, it's T. So when you look at this, you should understand that T can be substituted for any type and it's a template. So it can be basically an overload that can work with any type. So basically think of it as doing all of the possible overloads for all of the different types, if that's one way to think about it. <laughs> now inside of the function body, 
we can use t as if it was an integer or a string. So we could create a variable of type t by saying t and then giving it a name such as temp and you can assign it x and so forth. So t is just used as if it's any other type. It makes sense in the context of a template even though t is not an actual defined type. It's not like we created a custom class called T or anything like that. All right, that's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're going to go through this process by creating a templatized function. It should be pretty helpful, so go check it out if you want to get some hands-on experience with this. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, peace out.